Hi. Improvisation is creativity happening in real time. Let me try to give you an example. Amongst other things, I am known as a spontaneous poet. That means you can say to me any words or ideas in the whole of the English language. I'll take two or three completely different things, if you like. I will then immediately speak for you a poem that rhymes, makes sense, and features everything you have just said to me. So I need a, two or three of you to put up your hands and give me any word or idea, and we'll let these lovely people with the microphones reach you. Any word, phrase, or idea in the whole of the English language. Gentleman over there with his hand up. Can we reach there? Winches. Witches. Winches. Winches. Lies in, here. In, winches. in here. Okay, winches. Okay. Uh, should we have one over there? There's a gentleman with a hand up over there. Simplicity. Simplicity, winches. And should we have one more somewhere over here? Oh, where, where are we pointing? Uh, can we reach this gentleman over here? Winches, simplicity, and? Sailing. Sailing. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this. Sailing, winches, and simplicity. I've no idea what I'm going to do with this. Wish me luck. So I hope I'll get your vote as we climb together on the TED boat. Because it's only words that I'm regaling and I need your minds as we go sailing. Because now the poem is in motion. We'll keep afloat on this ocean. And then we'll smile and show a dimple. Even in poetry, we'll keep it simple. Because in this town that's good and pretty, sailing's obvious, it's simplicity. But I give it a bit of an inch, saying also perhaps you'll need a winch. So I hope it's really true. I'll keep this afloat just for you. And that means I can say we've got winches, simplicity, and sailing today. <clears throat> now, um, that was just to show I can do something. Um, Today, however, I would like to share with you why I believe that understanding improvisation is winning at life. So, first of all, why do we like improvisation? Yes, of course, there's a challenge going on, isn't there? Hopefully, you're seeing some skills on show. Hopefully, you like what is created. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? There's a feeling, there's an energy. How's it gonna go? How's it gonna turn out? We're all living in the moment together. Sometimes people say to me, can they film my spontaneous poems? And I say, yes, of course. But bear in mind, it'll never be quite the same when you watch it back, now that you already know how it will go. It's a bit like sports matches, isn't it? They're much better enjoyed as they are actually happening. <laughs> Imagine you went to the Football World Cup final. The stadium fills. You take your seat. But somehow, you already know what the result is going to be. You'll still enjoy the skills on show, watching the plot unfold, but it wouldn't have the same energy, would it? So, improvisation reminds me that we thrive on the energy of living in the moment. But here's something else I've learned through all my years of improvisation. It's this. Everyone can improvise, and everyone is creative. Let me try to explain. Every single sentence that you speak, you do not know what the last word is going to be. You know roughly what you want to say, the tone, the meaning, who you're talking to, but you haven't actually decided on the last word, have you? You probably haven't actually decided on most of the words. You are being creative in real time. You are improvising. I would even argue that when you watch a film or when you listen to music, you are being creative in real time. A film is just a series of pictures, isn't it? Music, a series of notes. But somehow, you instantly process them into something that can make you happy or sad, make you laugh, make you cry, something that moves you. That is creative, and we all love it. 
Now, um, for many years now, I have conducted poetry workshops with all different kinds of people, from five-year-old school children to the CEOs of international companies. And at the beginning of every workshop, I stand there and I say, by the end of this workshop, everyone here will have written a poem. Do you believe me? And some people say yes, but quite a few say no. But in all my years, genuinely, all my years of doing what I do, I have yet to find a human being who cannot write a poem. They just don't think they can. One time, I was doing a poetry workshop, and there was a particularly serious-looking gentleman, gray hair, in his 50s. I think he was the boss of an IT company. And he was definitely one of the ones who didn't believe he'd be able to write a poem. But at the end of the 40, 45 minutes, he came up to me with a piece of paper. He'd done it. He had written a poem. And he turned to me and he said, I'm going to take this to my mother so she can stick it on her refrigerator door. <laughs> he was just so happy. We love creativity. You see, I believe, honestly, in order to be creative, what we have to do is to relax, to trust it, to dare to open ourselves up to the magic, the magic that is outside of us and the magic that is inside of us. Now, obviously, while we're doing this, sometimes we'll make mistakes and we'll encounter failures, but that's absolutely fine. That's how we learn. That's how we develop. That's how we grow. <laughs> I think it was the American inventor, Thomas Edison, who once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. <laughs> so for me, improvisation is a perfectly formed example, uh, a microcosm of how we all thrive on the magic of creativity. But here is probably the biggest thing I've learned through all my years of improvisation. In improv, they say, pray for a good ending. They, they, why do they say that? Well, <laughs> when you are improvising, you are juggling lots of different things at once. You've got the suggestions from the audience. You're trying to come up with a good idea, the right words, the right sounds. You're thinking about how the audience are reacting. But somehow, it's all got to come to a conclusion. You need it to finish nicely. You need a good ending, a good last line. And I think we all do the same in life, don't we? We all have goals. We all want good endings, whether it's uh, in our careers, in our love life, um, in our hobbies. Maybe you want to get to the top of a very tall mountain. In our parenting, we all want our kids to turn out as well-rounded adults, don't we? Or in life itself, who wouldn't want a peaceful end and a good funeral? However, what I have learned through all my years of improvisation is nobody cares about the last line of my poem if the rest of the poem is useless. And I believe it's the same in life. Yes, it's great to have goals, to have targets. There are many academic research studies that show setting goals and targets can make you more focused, help you to achieve more. But if you could just click your fingers and already be at the top of the mountain, where's the achievement? Where's the exhilaration? Where's the meaning? In our parenting, yes, of course, we all want our kids to turn out as well-rounded adults, but it's the journey. It's the daily decisions and challenges. It's the love and the laughter. It's the mistakes. It's the twists and turns as they evolve into those adults that are the purpose and the joy and the meaning of being a parent. In life itself, who here would choose a brilliant funeral 
over a well-lived and fulfilling life. So, I truly believe that we win at life when, just like in improvisation, we relish the magic of creativity and we remember to enjoy the energy of living in the moment. Yes, set goals if you want to, but understand that that's not what it's all about. Instead, savor all of the possibilities, all of the feelings, the moments, yes, the failures, all of the experiences as you journey to the end. Improvisation has taught me that the journey is the meaning of life. The journey is the meaning of life. So, to finish, what I'd really like to do now is one more spontaneous improvised poem for you lovely people. However, this time, I would like the three words or ideas to be inspired directly by what I've just been talking about for the last few minutes. So it can be key words and ideas that I've said that you remember, or it can be your reactions, your thoughts, adjectives, whatever you like, but three suggestions inspired directly by what I've been saying, and let's see what we can do with that. So can we have somebody over here put up their hand? Any suggestion, any word, any phrase, any idea, or the microphone is on the way. What would you like to say? Happiness. Happiness is a beautiful choice. Can we have one over here? Any word, any phrase, any idea? Behind over there, there's somebody. So you've got happiness and just over there. Magic. Magic, one of my favorite words. We've got magic, we've got happiness. And one more, perhaps over here. Yes, there's a hand up, thank you. Mountain. Mountain, oh yeah, we did put that in too, didn't we? So. We've got mountain, we've got happiness, and we've got magic. Let's see what we can do. Before I do this, by the way, can I just say quite sincerely, thank you for listening to me today, and thank you for sharing these moments. It felt important. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Happiness. Magic and mountain, what am I going to do with this? I have no idea. So I'll try to sum it up in rhyme. Every life is a mountain to climb. But of course, I have to say, remember to stop and smell the roses on the way. So today we feel a bond. It is Ted's special wand. If we forget to think, it would be tragic. So we're enjoying this kind of magic. So the words, they pour out like a fountain. We've now learned how to climb the mountain because in the world of trouble and strife, remember to savor every step of life. So do it more and never less. It'll add to your happiness. And it means that I can say, be happy on your magic mountain today. Thank you so much and have a lovely evening. Thank you.